Hello everybody, my name is Rick, and welcome to my series of going through the now 18 critical security controls. I've been part of the editorial panel for a number of years and was part of the version 8, and so I wanted to put this together to be able to go through some of the details of the different controls. So uh, I'm going over control number 5, which is about account management. Uh, I'll put links to 1 through 4 in the description below, as well as a link to the CIS critical security controls page where you can download your own copy to follow along at home. So, control number five is about account management. My last two videos were kind of long. <laughs> they were big controls, and I also kind of went through a lot of like the, the major changes we made to version 8. Uh, but this one will be short, I promise. It'll be quick. Part of the reason we developed this control was because we never had an identity access management control. Control number four, which was controlled use of admin privileges. We had control 16, account monitoring control. And, and I would say kind of the spirit of control 14, controlled access based on need to know, though that's really more about data access and data protection. So in version eight, we wanted to have dedicated controls to make it very clear that identity access management was important. And initially, I suggested putting it all into one and like, let's consolidate these three into one. But after we looked at the draft, we said, well, let's kind of split the I and the AM, the identity part from the access management part. And so that's why we have control number five, which is about account management and control number six, which is access control management. And we felt that that would be easier to implement and to manage. So let's take a look at the seven to eight map as we have here. Um, you can follow the green line, you know, then see that, you know, we have controlled use access privileges and we have account monitoring all kind of go to control number five. Um, you know, we got rid of control number uh, four and control number 16 because of that. Uh, pretty much just took all their controls and, you know, and they were no, they were kind of hollow. So let's bring up the sub controls and safeguard. On this side, I have control number five from version eight. And on this side, I have control number four and 16 from version seven. Remember, we renamed them some controls to safeguards and we reordered the safeguards to align with the implementation group. So that kind of a little cleaner. 5.1, we took from both 4.1, maintain inventory of admin controls, and 16.6, .6, establish and maintain inventory of all accounts. Uh, we didn't want to differentiate an account's account, no matter how big, all accounts are important. So uh, in 5.2, we took from 4.4, use unique password. This rule to reuse passwords is not just about like other accounts within the organization, but accounts anywhere on the internet. Don't reuse passwords anywhere. Um, you know, always use unique passwords. That the one thing that we all security professionals will say is, is use unique passwords everywhere. 5.3 is from 16.9, disable dormant accounts. Pretty straightforward. 5.4 is kind of a reword of 4.3, ensure the use of dedicated admin accounts. And with this, not just have a separate admin account, a separate account for administration, but don't let the base account also have admin privileges. We've seen a lot more of that than we would like. 5.5 is new to establish and maintain an inventory of service accounts. Service accounts are not tied to users. They're used by other services or applications and have historically been a big protection gap because they're usually hard coded into scripts or applications or they're using shared passwords. So we need to make sure we address that. 5.6, centralized account management is a rewording of 16.2, configure centralized point of authentication, which also kind of absorbs, you know, 16.6 through 16.10, uh, because those are all the functions within, you know, account management. And finally, uh, many of these other controls that you kind of see in 4.16, you will see next time in uh, control number six, and I'll go over that. Though the one we did delete in all of this is 4.6, you know, related to use dedicated work extensions for all admin. Um, that's not always possible, especially now with the work from home kind of circumstance. So, but if you really want to do that, you, and we also have much better like authentication and secure things than when we originally put this, put, put that in, you know, 10 years ago. Um, but if you need to, you can use jump servers to be able to accomplish that. So now that I noticed the noted the changes, let's do a deeper dive into highlights and some of these six safeguards. So let me pull those down and let me bring up the big, um, details of the of the safeguards. I don't have to move over this time because it's kind of small. So you'll notice that a lot of these are implementation group one and two because you know account management kind of applies to everybody. We look at 5.1, we included user and admin accounts. We go into what should be in the inventory and we recommend that we review the, uh, the accounts at least quarterly. In 5.2, we kind of highlight the use of shorter passwords if you're using multi-factor authentication, but 
longer cast words if you're not. This is in line with the, the NIST guidance. Um, 5.3, we give timing of 45 days of inactivity from a, for the dormant accounts and 5.4, um, as well as having a separate account for admin use. And like I said, <laughs> we state the base user accounts not be privileged accounts. Like I can't stress this enough, you know, but we make sure we enforce that. Um, and 5.5, we define what should be in the inventory and review the list at least quarterly when we talk about the inventory of service accounts. And in 5.6, we just restate the use of directory services for centralized management, yeah, as opposed to you know managing credentials and in individual systems or, or platforms. So it's, I mean, it's a pretty concise control. These are the foundation of just making sure that you have accounts, accounts are properly uh, configured, that you're reviewing them and, and that they're managed centrally. So now let's, let's take that down and let's look up the upfront material or the narrative is what we say. You know, we created a whole new overview to define uh, the assignment and the management of credentials for user, admin, and service accounts used on assets and software. The why this control is critical, you know, that's brand new as well. We talk about how credentials are the target <laughs> uh, from attackers, you know, because that's the easiest way to get in. It's a lot easier to just take valid credentials and get walk right into your environment. Um, we describe the risk of weak passwords and password reuse and dormant accounts and service accounts and, and social engineering to be able to get passwords. Again, this is the target. Um, we stress protecting privileged accounts and that they are the ultimate goal right of, of the attackers because you know once you have a privileged account you escalate to a privileged account then you can maintain persistence in case the attacker is discovered somewhere else you know you can always come back and and uh, and get in with that privileged account or create other accounts or or other um, areas of entry uh, we touch on logging and monitoring as part of a comprehensive identity access management program which is kind of detailed in control 8 uh, version 8 um, and then let's put up page number two. And so in procedures and tools, we talk about how credentials need to be inventoried and tracked just like any other asset. We go, we give the link to the CIS password policy guide. We talk about account audits and uh, to find and remove dormant accounts, uh, find new accounts and especially new admin accounts, <laughs> right? Uh, we talk about the benefits of single sign-on for organizations with many platforms and applications and multi-factor authentication for remote access. And we recommend the use of password managers for users to track multiple accounts and passwords. Remember, we should not be reusing passwords anywhere on the internet, not just within your organization. And then finally, we talk about the inactivity timeouts and training users to lock their screens before leaving their devices. And this is true whether you're in an office or especially when you're working home or in a public space. So quick story, you know, back in the 90s, I worked in ethical hacking teams and, and whenever, you know, in our, in our office, if someone left a laptop open, so we would always jump on it and send some crazy email embarrassing them, you know, to the whole team. Um, you know, probably not something that's appropriate now, but I got so conditioned to doing control alt delete when I stood up that even if I'm in a restaurant and I'm like, oh, I need to get up, go somewhere. I still like put these fingers up because I was so conditioned to do that. Um, and so, or get conditioned to do that. Anytime you leave your, your your laptop, and I know this is policy in most big companies, lock your screen before you go. And finally, we have a link to the NIST guidance on managing identities. And I said that we try to make sure we we made sure that we were aligned and weren't saying anything different than what, what NIST said. So hopefully this was helpful. This was a quick one. Go over to changes and the uh, sequence from version seven to eight. Um, and uh, we'll continue the identity access management topic next time in version six. If you haven't already, please go to the CIS security.org, download your own version of the controls. Uh, if you have any questions or comment on the controls, please go to the controls workbench also in cissecurity.org where you can state comments and be part of the next one. And as always, feel free to leave a comment for me and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching everybody. And as I've said before, I don't have any pets to share, but I do have a lot of artwork that is kind of like our pets. This is one we affectionately call the Mermare that we picked up in a trip to Florida years ago. Have a great day.